Hello, my name is David Benheim, and in this video, I'm going to show you this feature called icons. I love this feature. It made the number three in my top 10 new features of the 2010s in PowerPoint. Just look how clean it is to have these images that match exactly the colors of your logo, how clean that is. So um, this is a feature that actually got released a few years ago, but just got a massive revamp. So to show you a glimpse of what that looks like, in the Insert tab, you have icons. It loads up so much faster. It's this whole new experience. And I'll go through this as well. There are actually four things here. I have another video that's devoted to stock images because this is absolutely fantastic. But then I'm also going to later on in this video cover cutout people and stickers as well. So you only get the new experience if you have the latest version. If you click on File and then Account, it shows you which version of PowerPoint you have. Now, I have here the Microsoft Office 365 Pro Plus, and this means that I get updates every month to the software. If you have the old style licensing, you'll have like PowerPoint 2010, 2013, 16, that's released every three years, but this one gives you way more updates. Also, I get a pre-release of the materials because I am in the Office Insider track. So if you have Office 365 but you don't yet see this option, it's coming soon. Now if you have PowerPoint 2019, you will see the old experience that I'll show you in a sec, also available in PowerPoint Online. And if you have an older version of PowerPoint, then if you leave a comment in this video and subscribe to my channel, then I can send you this thing called the PowerPoint Recipe Book which is this, it has all sorts of features for you to play around with, including these kind of preset icons that PowerPoint treats like shapes. So these, I made them and you can reuse them in any version of PowerPoint, recolor them as you choose. So what are some use cases for it? So it can be really good for displaying data like on here, repeated icons or relative sizes are really effective ways to display certain things and I just, find use cases for them everywhere. Uh, as you can see how prominently it appears in this PowerPoint recipe book as well. So let me explain three levels of image transparency. You have beautiful background images and these I think work best with full screen slides. If you have something inside the slide, I like to do this with kind of a no background, but I cover these in another video that I'll link to. But over here, I wanna show you this kind of thing. This is an icon that PowerPoint treats essentially like a shape pretty much, which means you have full flexibility on how it looks and how it can remain consistent with your brand. So here are four ways to show someone being confused using the four things that are preset within the PowerPoint new feature called premium content. So you can use a stock image, this thing called cut out people, this other thing called a sticker, and then this is an icon. Now, I do talk about stock images in another video, but in this video, we're gonna cover these three. Icons the most, because I think they're the ones that are the most useful, but the other two as well, I will explain what they are. If you're into graphic design, then these last two are things called vector images, and the first two are raster images. So to get the old icons experience, I'm gonna do it through PowerPoint on the web. I can click that I want to insert icons here. And then I have these that appear like this, the searchable, or you can browse through categories. Uh, I really love this feature. I've used icons, I kid you not, over a thousand times probably. Um, and I love that they've just been revamped as well. So let me show you the new experience of icons. Insert icons. Firstly, it loads up way faster than before. And secondly, there's just way more. The old list had about 850. This one, you can just keep scrolling and it's loading more. Whenever you reach the end, it keeps loading more. I have no idea how many there are in total here. <laughs> but let's look for, for example, a clock. And we can just sort of select these two. The new experience also has two different styles of icon. So the old style was just like this one, the fill style. The new one has this just 
kind of fainter outline there. Now you can still do what you could do before. You can select these and you can go to graphics format and completely change the color, completely change the outline to anything that you want as well. And this is a really, really cool experience. Um, PowerPoint treats them almost like shapes, which gives them all those cool, unique powers. Graphics outline of the one that's already an outline perplexes me a little bit, but <laughs> that's okay. I, I think they are really cool still. It's a lot simpler and a lot cleaner. And if you want to, you can also convert to shape. So this will convert it into a group shape and then just ungroup it. And this will be individual elements. So then you can just recolor anything that you want as you wish. So this gives you more flexibility there. Another way to ungroup, and this is so much faster, is just press the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift G two times. The first time it will come up with this message, press yes. And the second time, just ungroup it. It's the ungrouping command, and it's just so much better than all the clicking and pointing you have to do with the first method. And just to show you how to pick up the color from an icon or from any object, just select it, go to shape format, or if it's graphics format, click on there, then choose shape fill, and then go to eyedropper. And this is able to pick up the color from another thing, which is really awesome. I love that feature. Um, here's another hidden trick. If you want to use that feature, but pick up a color from somewhere outside of the slide, you can do that. It's just a little hidden trick that is really hard to know if you don't understand it. So if you use the eyedropper as you point away, it goes away like that. However, for some reason this works and I love it. If you click and hold and point to something, then it still works like that. That's all you have to do. Just click and hold and you can pick up the color from anything. So it could be a web browser screen. It could be absolutely anything in your content. I really, really love that. That's the eyedropper feature there. Other ways that you can access the same content are through the design ideas feature. I love this. You can sort of write out these bullet points and it can put them for you in icons. I have a whole video explaining much more about how this works. And for example, you can change them through here and edit them and get other ideas as well. Now I did say there were other options within the icons tab and there is cutout people and stickers. So cutout people, this is essentially just people with names like that, that you can choose from. And these are very crisp pictures of different people doing different poses. So you can just choose kind of some that you like and then just insert them. Cutout people as well as stickers are transparent. So you can still see objects behind them. And these are actors that essentially Microsoft have hired to play these positions. Here is all the ones that they have. Uh, to get to them, again, you can go to icons. I prefer that because it's actually one click less than pictures and then stock images. And then if you go to cut out people, you get all of these people showing like this. You can browse through the different people. It has the names of the actors to make it quite personable. So I didn't make these names up. This is actually what they're called, or at least what their stage name is. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> Uh, you can also just sort of search for an emotion. So I could say angry. And then these are all the angry versions of each one. <laughs> each one has a couple of them. There are different themes. So there are different professions for some of them. Some, this person's in a wheelchair. This person is in the medical profession. What are some use cases? I have actually used this um, one time. I kind of forced myself to try and use it. So just an example of how I have used them in the past is this slide over here. So I really was looking for an excuse and I think this actually works quite well. So I wanted to give advice to people on how to hold a microphone properly. So I found this sort of transparent background image of a microphone and then I put it in two different places with how to hold it and how not to hold it. And I use these cutout people, uh, crop them into shape so if I uncrop it, you'll see what I've taken out. They have that finger sticking out. And then over here, they have the full body one as well that I don't need for the purposes of this. And I've used it for that idea. And when you insert 
and go to cutout people, they've actually made them really, really large. And I guess they are HD people, so they wanna make use of that. It actually makes them the full height of the slide. And then it puts the second one slightly below the slide, uh, which is to show them there. If I create a new slide, control M, another feature that I quite like is if you go to icons and then cut out people, now it does just randomly order them every time you open it. So this is Kevin, Rachel, Angela. But if I close and reopen then go to cut out people, it's Ursula, Angela, Ian. So it's a different order. Uh, one other use case that I quite like is the ones holding a board. So each person sort of has a character of them holding a board like this one. Now, there are some that have multiple ones. In fact, every person has a different number of images taken. That's something that I realized. So once they're loaded up, if you have a board like this, you can just go to the Home tab and insert a text box that says something cool. It is a little bit slanted, so maybe use this to sort of slant your text box as well. There you go. So that could be another use case. So that's a cutout people. The fourth one is kind of the same vein as cutout people, but a little bit more comical. This thing called stickers. And stickers are kind of like cutout people where you have multiple poses of the same character, or you can have sticker families like this. I don't think I'll use these very much at all, but I guess if you're giving kind of a school presentation or something kind of funny, you can browse those for some inspirations. And again, like before, you just kind of click the ones that you want and insert them. You can search as well for emotions. Interestingly, five out of 23 of the sticker libraries are cats. Uh, cat here, meow, I, I guess that sort of speaks to the millennial generation, people who love cat memes. And you can make tons of cat memes like this as you please. Uh, some of these you might recognize, they are actually recognized brand names. So for example, Pusheen the cat has his own website with GIFs and also just loads of different animations that they've used. And here is for example, Taffy Cat. If you Google it, here's what you get. So this is the same ideas of what you get within PowerPoint itself, but it is, I guess, a higher definition. If you like this video, I have plenty more on PowerPoint, Excel, Zoom, and whatever other tool you like. So like the video and subscribe to my channel for more great content. Thanks for watching.